It's my pleasure now to introduce our first introductory speaker, the Honorable Jordi Herrera. Jordi is an economist at the Universidad Iberoamericana in Mexico City. At an early stage, Jordi served as the Chief of Investment Units and Undersecretary for Planning, both in the Mexican Secretary of Energy. But then later, he was the CEO of Pemex Gas, and in September of 2011, he was appointed Secretary of Energy by President Felipe Calderon. Mr. Herrera has been a member of several high-level public committees of different institutions, the most important being Chairman of the Board of Pemex and the President of the Board of the Directors of the C. F. E. It's my pleasure now to introduce the Honorable Jordi Herrera to the stage. Thanks so much. Good morning, everybody. Uh, for me, it's really a pleasure for being here in this very particular moment that my country is having in terms of what could be the new revolution in terms of energy in the region, let me put it that way, and most of it, what could this means in terms of job creation, in terms of growth, in terms for opportunities for the Mexican people, but also for the uh, companies that would like to come and help us to develop the amazing amount of resources that uh, we just discovered that we actually have inside the country. Uh, I'm. I'm trying to, to set a common ground so we can uh, learn together uh, what's the situation. I'm going to try to uh, talk a little bit about the model. Uh, the only thing that actually happened in December is it, uh, there was this amendment to the Constitution. And through this amendment, uh, there is a model to be developed on secondary law uh, that should uh, start early next month. So at the end, I will try to, to make that description and to get uh, the, the big picture related with, uh, with the things that are going down there in, in Mexico. First of all, uh, for the first time in many, many, many decades, uh, Mexico now has 100% of, of the rate of replacement of proven reserves. This is very important because the perception was that Mexico was running out of oil. This is not true. We have plenty of oil. Uh, I'm, I'm speaking only for conventional. We have uh, resources for more or less 40 years in, in current production. Our production is above 2.5 million barrels per day. This is the fourth year that we have actually stabilized the production. Uh, this is good news for the country. And what happened, uh, our uh, declining uh, main field uh, that is called Cantarel, uh, the declining was so hard and we were not prepared to make the substitution for different areas. Now everything uh, is right, uh, we made uh, the right investments. So uh, this is uh, since 2010, this is the fourth year in a row that we could establish the production above 2.5 million of barrels per day. In terms of gas, Although, uh, if you look at the number in terms of production uh, since the year 2000 has grown a lot, uh, in the uh, past years our production also declined because the same reason. Cantarel was declining, so we use a lot of the gas available to increase production in a, on a secondary uh, phase of production. And we're looking for new areas uh, at the Gulf of Mexico to get more gas. We know for sure that we have tons of gas. We have a lot of potential, uh, once again, in conventional uh, areas. But the economics are not right. Uh, we, we treat in terms of fiscal uh, obligations uh, just the same uh, to the barrel of oil to the equivalent uh, in gas. So in terms of uh, prices, is not the, the same figure at the end. So we are trying to change all the regulatory and all the fiscal aspects so we can manage to bring gas again into the, the economy. Uh, I'm going to skip uh, the power uh, part. And our imports, that uh, just shows uh, how big could uh, 
our market grow. We used to import less than a 0.2 BCF only five years ago. Currently, we're importing 1.4 BCF, billion cubic feet a day, uh, and we are expecting to double this figure in the next couple of years. So we are uh, developing a huge new pipeline system uh, going from the north down to the, to the center, middle part of the country, mainly to Guadalajara, Monterrey, and Mexico, the three big cities in, in the country. Uh, we, we were not used to natural gas, and now we are realizing that this is very good opportunity, not only because of the price and, and, and the, the fact that it, this will give a lot of competitiveness to the economy. Uh, we have a lot of potential attracting new investment because we can say to them, yes, we do have uh, across the country natural gas, and this is uh, becoming very important. And also, in terms, let me set another example. Our consumption for regular gasoline for, for, uh, for cars, we're importing more than 50% of the consumption. Uh, the figure is around 400,000 barrels per day. It's a lot of gasoline uh, at the end, but uh, uh, once again, with the reform, we are expecting to attract new investments so new refineries could uh, uh, be set uh, in, the, in the Mexican region and we could uh, gain opportunity because we are importing a lot of uh, products, specific products. This is just an example, but at the end, Yes, we do have a lot of resources, but we don't have the actual capacity to transform them and, and send them to the market. This is uh, the classic uh, paradox that we're facing in, in Mexico. A lot of resources, but we don't, have, we, we don't have enough infrastructure to develop them. Okay, uh, from there, uh, there were uh, so many efforts in the near past uh, expecting a reform. The biggest one uh, was in 2008 with uh, uh, President Calderon. The main aspect that came out from that reform uh, were a specific type of contracts to allow Pemex to uh, attract new companies in what are called the incentivized or um, incentivize contracts, performance contracts, no more than that. Uh, there were so many adjustments to the regulatory entities and to the ministry itself, but at the end, the new element in the reform were only contracts. In the proposal that uh, the President Peña Nieto uh, sent out to Congress, there were not uh, much difference from the reform in 2008. Uh, the main um, proposal to the Congress uh, were a different type of contracts. They were asking Congress to approve uh, profit-sharing contracts. Uh, mainly, this was uh, the proposal coming out from, from the government. And uh, our party, the National Action Party, uh, sent a different proposal to Congress asking for a big transformation in the whole industry because uh, uh, we know that the possibilities are there. At the end, uh, uh, with negotiations and so on, uh, the, the new uh, amendment allowed not only contracts, but another ways to invest uh, in the energy sector. I'm going to talk a little bit about it in a few moments. But the most important part is that uh, at this moment, nothing has happened. I mean, it, this is only a constitutional uh, reform, and we have to wait until legal, a specific regulatory, fiscal, and some other uh, laws should be uh, changed to, to get this model done. Uh, I'm going to, to set uh, some examples, just a few of them. Uh, we're starting just like in Brazil or just like in Colombia with a national hydrocarbon commission that will uh, make international bids uh, to allow uh, companies to participate in exploration and production. This is very important. This is going to be the first time that Mexico will allow somebody different from the government to participate directly 
uh, into bidding processes so they could uh, be hired. This is very important. Uh, companies are not going to be allowed to register reserves, but the value of the contract will be accepted in the SEC, uh, the, the commission uh, related with, uh, with the money regulatory issues here in the States. Uh, the value of the contract is uh, available, let me put it that way, but the ownership of the resources uh, still remains from uh, the country. So this uh, hydrocarbon commission will hire by different type of uh, relationship with, uh, with private companies, or it could be private companies joined together with Pemex or Pemex uh, itself, uh, and gain these new areas uh, of development. Could be uh, deep water, could be shallow water, could be uh, onshore for unconventionals, and all the possibilities are there since uh, the reform. Uh, going from there, uh, there will be in a few weeks this first round that we are calling it uh, round zero. Round zero means that Pemex will say to the authority, to the new regulatory authority, on which areas that Pemex already is working, they're going to stay. Uh, Pemex could say, I'm going to keep everything that I already own, let me put it that way, and at the end, Pemex could say, I'm not interested in deep water, I'm not interested in, in unconventionals, whatever the possibilities are. We have to wait only for a couple of weeks to understand which will be the uh, business case for Pemex. And from there, the uh, Hydrocarbon Commission will say to the market, okay, uh, these are the areas that actually we know Pemex does not want to develop. Um, from there, and uh, getting more information, geological information, they're going to start the bidding processes. Uh, perhaps uh, next year, uh, the government wants all this to happen next year. I think it might be delayed for a year, no more than that, but at the end, will be at the end of next year or early in 2016. Uh, okay, that's the, the basic model, and once again, the companies, including Pemex, will not be allowed to uh, register their resources. They are uh, operators that we call them for working for the government, but the value of the contract uh, could be used to get some money out from uh, Wall Street. Okay, um, we also uh, decide to uh, separate money, oil money, from uh, regular fiscal income money. All the uh, specific taxes that will be in the industry, they will go just like in many other countries, you can say in uh, Norway, you can say uh, Emirates or Saudi Arabia, there will be this sovereign fund that will use that money to increase the possibilities of investment in basic infrastructure. That means roads, that means uh, ports, that means airports, whatever is needed to help out to develop the resources. This is very important because public uh, money coming out uh, from oil is not going to be used to pay uh, regular expenses for the government. Uh, and this is quite different from the, from the history that we, we have now in the country. 40% of the national income comes out from Pemex at this moment. Uh, with the reform, the extra money that we are expecting is not going to be used only for uh, regular uh, spending for the government. We are going to try to use uh, that money in a better way to develop infrastructure, just like in the case of the countries I was mentioned. Um, uh, there are some specifics there. I will leave the, the presentation for you to, to understand better the model. And because of time, I will stay only with the highlights of the, of the reform. Uh, from there, it's not working. Uh, um, in terms of midstream and downstream, uh, yes, uh, the companies are allowed to invest. 
uh, could be with Pemex, be, be hired by Pemex, could be in JB with Pemex, joint venture, or could be done even without any public entity. This is very important. Uh, at the end, we're saying that we have to, to grow as fast as we can, and the most important part of it is to not rely on government entities to make the investments. So any company will be allowed in general terms to invest in downstream and midstream uh, with or without Pemex, with or without public companies. This is very important. So at the end, Pemex will say, I, uh, I just want to develop uh, midstream. I'm not interested because I have this uh, money restriction, a uh, public uh, money restriction. Um, I'm not going to invest in refineries, for an example. That means that Pemex will not be there, but at the end, somebody else could. And as I show you in the first slide, uh, the opportunity is already there. We're importing 400,000 barrels of gasoline, just for an example, uh, a day. So the possibilities are so huge uh, because of this new scheme. Um, there are going to be a, uh, there is going to be a major transformation uh, crossing uh, the whole government, uh, a new Ministry of Energy with more solid position in different areas, new regulatory entities, uh, the Hydrocarbon Commission that is going to be uh, responsible for taking care of the resources of the country, a, an energy regulatory commission that will set uh, competition for midstream mainly, uh, and a new environment and uh, safety, uh, uh, safety and environment uh, agency that will take care of the most important part that will be uh, the, the, the workers in the industry and, of course, uh, uh, the environment. This is very important. There are going to be three different entities that will be uh, there to ensure that all the new development uh, is going to be the, the right model and the right way to do it in the country with the best practices. At the end, the best practices uh, in deep water or the best practices for unconventionals are not in Mexico. We have to learn a lot uh, from the experience around the world. Uh, let me put it an, uh, an example. If we're thinking in deep water uh, drilling, the best practices should be around uh, the area of Norway or uh, the new policy that is in the Gulf of Mexico after the, the accident a few years ago. And for unconventionals, we don't have a doubt the right uh, way to, to do fracking, the, the best options that we have are just crossing the border. So uh, we have to, to take a look on what the world uh, has been doing lately, and we are trying to adapt that situation to the new legal and regulatory frame. Uh, in terms of uh, electricity, I will only say that different from oil and gas, uh, the only participation for private companies will be on generation. Uh, the decision that Congress made was that uh, any company could go and invest in Mexico and the energy is going to, uh, is going to be bought to a different company from the public utility. This is brand new also. The public utility is going to generate, is going to uh, make uh, distribution and trans uh, transportation of the energy, but a different company is the one that will go to the market and ask for the best price of energy. This is brand new, this is very important, so the market will be uh, open, but just in this field of uh, generation. Um, these are the, the details. This new uh, public company uh, has to be formed in less than a year. We are, uh, we are trying to develop this as fast as we can. I think, once again, one year is perhaps too aggressive. Uh, but at the end, will be uh, this kind of transformations uh, within two years, no more than that. And uh, the most important part, 
the size of the opportunity in our country. The International Energy Agency is saying that Mexico should be uh, uh, between the, the six or the seven largest reservoirs in the world for unconventionals. Uh, everybody is, is thinking just in Eagle Four uh, crossing down the, the border, but we have another four areas, different areas, uh, with a lot of resources for unconventionals. I'm not talking this time in terms of the possibilities for deep water uh, drilling, uh, just uh, making this uh, a small view to what could happen in terms of unconventionals. So we have uh, these five different areas. We know that the best ones are located close to the Gulf of Mexico, once again. But uh, this is also a very uh, good opportunity because Cantarel, uh, the biggest, one of the biggest uh, fields in the world, uh, was located at the south part of the Gulf of Mexico. So all the infrastructure, thinking in terms of uh, midstream and downstream, uh, uh, is, uh, was built from south up north. With this new uh, configuration and this possibility of resources, all the midstream and downstream facilities should uh, be built from the north down to the south. This is very important. We have to build almost everything once again. So it's a huge opportunity uh, if we think only in pipelines and, and could be crude oil pipelines, could be product uh, pipelines and refineries in basic chemistry. Uh, we have not invested in chemistry and petrochemicals in the past 40 years. So uh, f uh, just to set uh, a figure, our deficit in terms of petrochemicals is above $70 billion a year. Why is that? Because we don't have infrastructure. Yes, we do have feedstock, once again. The problem of Mexico is not about resources. It's not about feedstock. It's about uh, the infrastructure that is needed to, the, to transform and develop those resources into uh, better economics in terms of the change of value. OK, so uh, these are the main areas. And uh, this is the closest one to the border uh, at the uh, top part of the slide. Uh, you can realize that that is Eagle Fort. Uh, the, the tiny blue line is the Rio Bravo. No, So we have down the border a lot of resources that we already know uh, they are there. But Pemex does not have the, or the expertise nor the money to make this possible in terms of production. Pemex uh, has no experience at all developing unconventionals. So uh, mainly the reform is to allow private companies with experience, with the best practices, taking care of environment, to come down to Mexico and invest in this new uh, world that we are seeing uh, in the years to come. In terms of resources, total resources of the country, I, I started saying that we could have a production uh, assurement for the next 40 years without unconventionals. With unconventionals, uh, we think that our potential should go up to 80 to 90 years. But that also means that we can easily increase production. Uh, we don't know, uh, I don't know uh, what's going to be the value of oil in the, in the uh, end of the century. Uh, we don't know that for sure because climate change and so many so many other things. So it's wise uh, for us as a country to develop these resources in present time, to save some money for the future, to invest wisely in infrastructure, and to make possible that actually we can develop the jobs that our people need inside the country. This is very important because this might uh, be the last train, we call it down in Mexico, the last chance for our economy to become a stronger and to provide a job to every single young guy uh, who wants a, a job in, in our country. Uh, these are the, the basic. Um, I will only say that uh, the schedule in Congress is too aggressive. Uh, we count more than 25 different specific laws that should be changed uh, to make this possible. 
Uh, they, they are going to start as early as next month. I think this whole year will take, uh, uh, take the time to change all those more than 25 different laws. Uh, at the end, the, the government does, does not need anybody else to get this approval. Uh, it's different, a constitutional approval, you need two-thirds two of, the, of the Congress. Here, you only need majority. So at the end, it should be easier for the government to approve the new legal and regulatory scheme. And uh, it's, it's aggressive because, yes, we are in a hurry. Yes, we need uh, to gain comp competitiveness. And yes, we need to create new jobs urgently uh, down, the, down the country. And finally, uh, we have plenty of potential. We know that for sure. It's not a, a guess. We know that for sure that Mexico has a lot of resources. Let me put it this way, because you are going to hear from the Ambassador of Canada. The region could be self-sufficient in a few years, no more than that. This is very good news for politics. Uh, this is very good news for uh, economic. And this is very good news for job creation in the region. Uh, so uh, we, we want to be part of the development of the region. We don't want to be part of the problem of, of not growing. We want to be part of the, of the solution. Uh, the reform, yes, what happened in December at Congress was pretty good, but it's only the beginning. From there, anything could happen in Congress. We have to wait and see for, uh, uh, for the details. This is very important. Before you make a decision, in terms of if this could be interesting, we have to wait and see what Congress is going to, to approve. And uh, as I was uh, mentioning before, this is for me the last big chance for Mexico to grow. Uh, this, this could be very important. Last time I was attending a lecture here with Governor Perry, he was saying that only Texas, only last year, uh, there were more than a million uh, jobs uh, created here in Texas, mainly because of the unconventionals. Uh, the best year in Mexico ever uh, was less than uh, half a million. So this is huge. This is a huge opportunity for us to get uh, in a right path, in a right way, our economy and make things possible uh, in Mexico. And at the end, I think there won't be this is a scenario for a long period of years because all the experience, all the know-how, all the right companies with the right practices are already here. Just a few kilometers above the frontier, uh, there's everything uh, to be learned, is everything uh, in terms of experience, and we want to uh, take this experience, this know-how uh, to develop those resources just a few kilometers down the, the border. Uh, for me, I think uh, this is it. I'm pretty happy to be here with you. I hope to see you soon. And, and looking how our economies are going to be developed as a whole. Thank you.